I've been asked recently, uh, ever since we did this video on the Origin uh, AMD laptop that has a 3950X 16 core processor in it, whether or not uh, temperatures and stuff can stay under control. And I've always told people, yes, the temperatures in this are perfectly fine. But recently, we've noticed the temperatures in this starting to climb. The Elite XG270QG from ViewSonic breaks the traditional ugly appearance of gaming monitors by providing an ultra clean design while still delivering gamers the features that they want most. Features like a one millisecond response time, IPS 165 hertz overclock display, black brushed aluminum stand with tilt and swivel, mouse and keyboard cable anchors and customizable subtle lighting. To learn more about the XG270GQ from ViewSonic and to see current pricing, click the link in the description below. But we don't use this system a lot. Uh, it shouldn't have really any dust accumulation in it. We use it mostly as our capture rig if we're using our like XR1 capture card from EVGA when we're doing like the React series and stuff like that. But we started noticing two things. One, the fan speed on this has been increasing significantly because of temperatures rising in this, which has actually made it to where we had to go in and change a fan profile in this to make it quieter so it wouldn't be intrusive in our recordings. And second of all, just doing regular things have started seeing temperature spikes for the CPU uh, that are pretty significant. So today we're gonna kind of investigate this. Keep in mind, this is a desktop CPU. It is literally a full-on desktop chip that you would put on your full-size ATX motherboard plopped onto a motherboard. A chip that usually requires a pretty significant amount of power and a pretty beefy power supply and VRM system all crammed into a laptop. So if you guys haven't seen our review of this, we've done one in the we've done our, our video about this in the past. We didn't really open it up and take off the cooling solution because when we do our reviews, we don't want to disturb any of the thermal pads or thermal paste in there um, because we want to keep our reviews as out of the box as possible. But one of the ways you have to understand that they keep these, these systems under control is one, there's less wattage available to them. So whereas this is like 125 watt part, the, I think it's 125. Phil can put the actual number here. I believe it's 125. This one's limited to about 75 watts or so, which is significantly less power that, that you would get with the CPU. As such, that limits the boost clocks and the actual core clocks so that it doesn't go as high, creating as much heat or as much need for power draw. Because remember, we are limited to a 200 and, what is the wattage on this guy right here? 230 watt power brick. And we also have our GPU in here, which I forget what it is at the moment that also has to be powered off of that. This is our full-size RTX 2070. So that's a, but look, all I did was do control alt delete and you saw that it spiked up to like 72 C and now it's coming back down to 65. So let me bring this back up. And what you'll notice is that we start, see 67, 64, not doing a whole lot. will make the temperatures on this sort of climb like really, really fast. So bringing up a web page here, I'll just kind of put this over to the side so you guys can see. Look at that, 73C. So already the fans are kicking up, getting fairly loud. The fans are at almost 4,000 RPM. It's at 70C playing back this YouTube video. 70C I find to be pretty warm, 77C, 74. We've seen this get as hot as 90C while we were doing our live stream, and that was while using the NVEC encoder, which is the NVIDIA encoder. So I'm not entirely too sure uh, why we're seeing such crazy perform or such crazy temperatures here. Now let's talk about some of the settings though. In terms of performance and power modes, it is currently in performance mode. We've done it both in entertainment, quiet, and power saving. Power saving will bring the temperatures down as you might expect. So this is Cinebench R20. And uh, what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna do a single a single run with all cores, and we'll keep an eye on what the CPU temperature does. So right now in uh, power save mode, the fans aren't even ramping up, because if we take a look at the cores, it's only running at 1.27 gigahertz. So I did that just to show, like the people are automatically saying, we'll put it in power save mode or balance mode, and you'll, you'll notice the temps go down. Well, of course you will, but it's at 1.27 gigahertz at 55C, which already to me tells you something is clearly not right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the power mode back into entertainment, which is actually more of a balanced mode. So by doing that now, you'll notice the temperatures will start to come up. See, we just shot up 10C right there by doing that. So let's go ahead and bring up Cinebench. We're at almost 70C, just loading the program and it could be above it now, 71C. Now when we run this test, look at how far the clock is coming down. 
It's only hitting 2000 megahertz and then it drops all the way down to 128, 130 megahertz, which tells me this is how it's trying to keep itself under control temperature wise is by severely downclocking itself. So you can see the test is running, albeit very slowly. So there's something really, really not right in terms of this setup. Uh, and we have a feeling that it might be thermal paste. So if we come back here to power once again, and we go ahead and put this back on performance mode, temperatures, as you can see, shot up to 81, and now you're gonna see them fall fast. And the reason for that, again, is the core clocks. Now watch, when the core clocks come back up, they go up above 2000. That's because of the setting that we had it set at there. So 3200 all core or so, and then drops down to 200 megahertz. 3200, 200 megahertz. So that's the way it's controlling itself with this particular workload. Now I know some of you might be saying, Jay, that's not fair. Cinebench is very difficult to run. That doesn't really mimic real life scenarios. Uh, and you're right. So what we'll show you next here is what something like a synthetic benchmark like Heaven does to the system. We got something more lightweight here and you can see this is a synthetic benchmark. The CPU is having to hardly do anything. This is a little bit more expected. Fans are at 85% at 4,000 RPM. This is a really good temperature, but we have the GPU running under load around the same temperature, a little bit hotter than the CPU at idle. That's why we need to go and check this out. ADC right now while running a synthetic is terrible. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn it off, we're gonna open it up, we're gonna repaste it, and we're gonna see what actually happens here to our performance if anything improves. So to keep track of all this and to assemble it, I am using my iFixit. Although I'm using my big kit this time and I'm using the project mat, which is all magnetic. And then I labeled which is the top. That way I'd be able to uh, keep track of these screws and where they actually go. So it's not really a big deal usually, but I've not taken this laptop apart. So I'm not entirely sure how accessible this is gonna be how hard it's gonna to be to get to that heat pipe, what all's threaded in there, what sorts of ribbon cables there are. That's the battery, by the way. <laughs> Not a very big one, because this is the kind of system, it's only 62 watt hours. This is the kind of system that you absolutely, positively have to run on the brick because of the level of hardware that's in there. Otherwise, you are not going to you're not gonna get very good performance out of it. We'll get this torn down. We'll come back with what it looks like inside once I figure out how to get it all open. This isn't a tutorial about how to take this computer apart. This is just a video about investigating. I think we might've actually taken one of these apart. I'm gonna have to go back and check my review of this. We might have taken this apart. It would also mean any paste issues is mine. Okay, maybe I did take it out. I don't remember. In fact, Oh yeah, that paste does not look good. Look at that, ugh. Yeah, let's go check the review. So Phil's looking at the raw footage from that project file and there I am taking it apart. And look, that looks way better than what's on there now. This is what happens when I listen to the internet on the right way to put on paste. So it's, it's good to know that, cause I was gonna say it was not running this hot on us before. Shut up. All right, we'll clean it up. We'll put some uh, KPX on there, which stays nice and gooey all the time. And uh, we'll compare, but I have a feeling. Just put LN2 plot on there. Oh, we're out, never mind. Yeah, we're out of LN2. Sad day. All right, let's clean it up. So now that we have verified that I'm the one that repasted this, it means obviously Origin's not at fault. I thought I repasted this, I couldn't remember. But now we're gonna see uh, how much of an improvement it made. So I used the KPX on here, which is the Kingpin Extreme. <coughs> so I used the KPX on here, which is the Kingpin Extreme uh, thermal paste, which works at all temperatures. I used it because one, it never gets hard. Uh, it's literally the best thermal paste I've ever used and it goes all the way down to uh, liquid nitrogen temperatures. So clearly this shouldn't have a problem. First things first, the fans are not blaring the second it boots up, which is what I was experiencing before. I mean, listen to that. Yeah, it's actually in the 40s for the first time. As things are loading and booting up, this would hit 70s, as you guys saw, look at that, 48. And look at the fan speed, look how slow it's going. 
So this is actually really promising. So you guys remember it was going down into the mid 70s, but it was also extremely uh, lowering the clocks. So let's just do a run right here and see what happens. 70C under load, 76. But if you look, it's spending way more time in the 3000s. It's actually at 3300. Again, that's amps related. If we go over 130 amps, it pulls the clock down like that for a moment to bring the power down. So our last score was a 7348. And that was a 7487. So with the fans doing like nothing and the, the amp issue still there because of the power delivery of the laptop, we just got our best score with the laptop not even ramping up its fans. So now you can see everything is acting more appropriate. That was literally the worst case scenario right there. <clears throat> we gained score because of the fact that the core clocks were actually hitting 3.3 all core, not 3.2. And uh, what I wanna do now is I wanna go ahead and I wanna make the fan speed higher. So we're hitting a lot, we're spending a lot more time at 3.3, 3.35, we can't up the current. I mean, that, that current limit is something we can't do anything about it. That's why it comes down in the core clock like that. 7701, so we just gained another almost 300 points by putting the fans to max speed. So I'm gonna put these fans back to where they were on automatic. Remember how our temperatures were in the mid 70s to the 80s running uh, heaven? Let's see what they look like now. That's way better than it was already. That's like a 5C reduction right there. Almost 8C reduction. GPU temperatures are still roughly what they were before. I don't think the GPU pace was as bad as the CPU was. The CPU was all cracked and stuff. You can see how easily just repasting something can certainly improve your performance. So there you go. We had to investigate what was causing the CPU to run hot. Might as well have taken you along for the ride. And as you can see, it was a bad thermal paste job done by yours truly. Go ahead and write all your hate comments down below.